Hello and welcome. You're watching the weekly edition of Your Trades on ET Now with me, Sneha. With me, as always, is Priyanka. And well, uh, it's been a tempered trading week to say the least. Coming in, remember, this is the same week where we touched a record high of twenty five thousand fifty, and then also we've uh, pulled back to those levels because if you see the move coming in for Nifty, half a percent lower. So Nifty has ended in the negative for the week, despite uh, touching a fresh record high. So lots of global pressure coming in. The global handover has been looking. Weak. Offlet, so that has been panning out on uh, the Indian markets as well. Quickly take you through what the weekly moves look like. Then um, Nifty 50, like you saw, half a percent lower. Mid cap also one tenth of a percent lower. Uh, higher, in fact, mid cap was among the only indices that has uh, ended uh, the uh, trading week on a positive note because you had small cap 100 that was also lower. Um, so uh, three tenths of a percent cut coming over there as well. Sensex also almost half a percent lower coming in. Now talking about sectoral gainers and losers, you had Nifty Energy. That was your top sector this week. Uh, and, uh, that was led by Adani, NTPC, BPCL, Adani Green, Power Grid, Tata Power, and Coal India. Very good moves coming in for Nifty Energy. On the flip side, you had Nifty Realty, which was the top loser in this trading session. Uh, more than three and a half percent lower is where that index is closing. Consist it was consistently the worst performing sector over the course of the week, and that was dragged by names like Prestige Estates, Lodha, Brigade, Godrej Properties, Sobha. All of them. With cuts of anywhere between three and twelve percent, Macrotech developers down twelve percent, so that's a big move coming in. You had Nifty IT also the second top sectoral lo loser coming in for the week. Very bad moves coming in for Nifty IT. Auto, FMCG, metal, PSU, uh, oil and gas, all of them have ended uh, this trading session in uh, the red. So that's largely what the week looked like in terms of uh, what the equity markets did. But we did have some uh, news makers also coming in. The highly anticipated Ola Electric IPO opened for subscription and saw a very strong. Anchor in, uh, interest, anchor investor interest also coming in north of 2,700 crores as well. So good um, subscription is being expected on that front. We'll see how that IPO pans out. And you had a lot of auto sales data also trickling in over the course of Thursday and Friday. July dispatches have been a mixed bag, and that has weighed heavily on the Nifty auto sector as well. Lots of central bank action also coming in. But Priyanka, this is what I spotted and what stood out to me over the course of the week. What stood out to you? Yes, uh, Sneha. So in fact, you know we took uh, round. 24 sessions 24 sessions mm. to run up for 1000 point but the entire week we saw such a range bound trade it was in a narrow range not more than 60 point of range what we saw on nifty and bank nifty nearly 60 600 to 700 points of range it was so very range bound mid cap actually got the maximum of the damage here but then what we uh, what we saw was earnings impact and of course a macro factor big macro reasons which could be potentially the one reason that we saw sell off us uh, fell off badly yesterday mirrored by the, the same movement was mirrored by europe and then asia today in the morning and then now indian markets also uh, fomc meet rates were unchanged uh fed chair also signaled rate cut in september month but the kind of contraction economic activity contracted in us the data which came in on thursday that was one signal the traders were little jittery on the street and we saw a sell off of the us markets bank of japan increased rates by 25 bps in 16 years and that's what we saw japanese market also tumbling on this news china pmi contracted and what we saw in the bond market 10 year bond market uh, 10 year uh, bond yield that fell below 4% briefly today in the morning dollar index also uh, briefly slipped below 104 but then later it regained to 104 so lot of macro factors and crude also of course the middle east, the kind of middle east tension which we are seeing uh, crude fell below 80 dollars also so macro factor of course the macro data needs to be uh, cautiously viewed at this point in time but a lot of sectors where we saw uh, momentum catching up especially sectors like uh, cement space where ultratech took control of india cement and analysts believe that industry could have could see more of mna activity going further this space was buzzing this whole week auto you just discussed and of course uh, power and energy were the key themes that we saw during this whole week and uh, many of the ga gainers from uh, large caps came from power and energy space only and in fact from broader markets also but clearly uh, a kind of move that we saw in energy adani energy 12% post the strong response to qip these are some of the spaces one needs to uh, view cautiously and uh, closely also now we have guests joining in to discuss more on the markets give us a uh, technical perspective we have nagaraj shetty technical and derivative research analyst from hdfc securities and we do have 
Vinit Bolinchkar, Head of Research, Ventura Security. Uh, welcome to both of you, gentlemen. Uh, first, I would quickly like to take it with uh, uh, with Nagaraj to understand the kind of move. Uh, Nagaraj, uh, we, we saw that it was a completely a narrow range what we saw the whole week. Market, uh, Nifty, Sensex both scaled record levels this week. In fact, uh, Sensex also touched 81, 850. But then the range was very narrow for uh, Nifty and for Bank Nifty both. How do you make what do you make of the markets at this point in time? Index levels, what you're watching for August months, because as what we saw for August is nality, that it has done pretty well in the past uh, years. Uh, what do you have to say on the market, on the levels right now? Hi, uh, good afternoon. Nifty good afternoon. has started to show our downward corrections. And uh, if you look at last one month, uh, one and a half months performance in the Nifty, we have seen so many uh, higher tops and higher bottoms in the market. And market has gradually moved up. It has passed by the events and it has showed the knee-jerk action. I think today's decline is going to be the healthy correction for the market. I'm not expecting any a bigger turnaround for the market or a bearish trend, beginning of the bearish trend for the market as of now. This is a healthy correction, so normal corrections. I'm expecting this downward correction is going to end in the next uh, couple of sessions, at least uh, uh, two to three sessions. And uh, 24,400, 24,300 is going to be a strong uh, support for the market. And I'm expecting upside bounce. And very soon from the lower levels, we could even reach uh, new all time highs over the period of time. All right, so that's the view coming in from Nagra. He says that um, he's not seeing this correction to last out pretty much longer. But, you know, that's actually quite uh, contradictory coming into the uh, market expert we spoke in the morning, Harish Krishnan. He said that this is going to drag out. So very contrasting views coming in. I think we'll just have to buckle up and wait and see how the markets pan out and how long this correction phase goes on for. But, Vineet, I'm going to come to you now. Let's talk about a little bit of fundamental factors coming in. And we're in the peak of the earnings season. So... Uh, uh, tell us on the back of the earnings we've seen, you know, some of them have been dampeners, some of them have been positive surprises coming in for the street. Tell us on the back of earnings, which sectors would you now relook at if you were avoiding them earlier or which sectors look like safe sectors amid this market correction that we're seeing? So, you know, the power sector continues to remain the favorite and it is not only a domestic theme. But it is now Indian players, uh, you know, making noises on the global arena also. So we've seen Power Grid, uh, you know, venture into uh, TND in Africa, and they expected that the business could be worth almost thirty to forty thousand crores over a period of time. But you know, it's the first of the starts. So here we like Skipper, NTPC, and Adani Energy Solutions. So Skipper is a very strong play on the TND space. They make the transmission uh, towers. They get uh, business also from the small uh, towers in the telecom space. They also make railway infrastructure and they're into, you know, HRC buildings. And what is important is they're also fa favorably back, backward integrated to make angles and other uh, elements which go into making the products that they manufacture. They also have expertise in uh, doing EPC and they have a small business which is into the water business. They make PVC pipes. So, you know, all three segments firing on all cylinders, 50% upside is what we are looking at. The other one is AES, uh, you know, they did the recent uh, placement and that provides capital for further growth. Uh, uh, we expect that the stock price could be upwards of 16 to 1700 in the next uh, 12 months. That's about uh, 25 to 30% upside. And one of our very favorites is NTPC. You know, NTPC has already carved out its uh, assets into the green assets into a subsidiary, which is going to go in for listing. They'll be filing their prospectus in the month of uh, September. And we expect that, you know, either in Q3 or worst case by Q4, they will do their NTPC green car uh, maiden uh, 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 fundraise. So we think that, uh, you know, the... Uh, paths are very clear. Uh, these all three counters have got substantial fundamental backing and they are not even overvalued in these markets where the valuations are prime. So I think that these stocks can easily give you a, a 30 to 50 percent upside over the next uh, uh, 12 to 18 months. The recommendations coming in from Vineet. Uh, we stay for a short break here. More to come on the other side of the break. Uh, Vineet and Nagaraj Bhutta.
Welcome back here watching the weekly uh, edition of Your Trades. We have uh, Vineet Bolinchkar and Nagarat Chetty with us. Uh, my question to you, uh, Vineet, uh, are there going to be bigger macro reasons to worry about the kind of uh, data, the economic data which came in uh, on Thursday, uh, which shows that uh, maybe the economic activities are contracting in U.S., uh, crude is falling on the fears of slowdown, potential slowdown from China. That's what China PMI data suggested. And Japan tumbled upon uh, BOG increasing the rates. Uh, how to how should one approach the macro factors right now? So, you know, uh, you know, I'll give a slightly uh, extended answer. You know, there are, you know, we can think of markets in uh, four major players. US and their isotope markets of North America, Australia and Europe. Uh, the next is Japan, China and India. Now, out of these four large markets that I spoke to you about, India is the only one which is going, right? Uh, let's look at Japan. They're increasing the rates and the US markets to a large extent are funded by the Japanese carry forward trade. And with interest rates declining in the US and rising in the uh, Japan, it makes it all that more difficult to, you know, carry the trade uh, you know, or kick the can down the road. So we expect some kind of unwinding to happen. Uh, that can happen short term. Along with that, you know, you have elevated prices on containers because of the Gulf War, you know, uh, threat, uh, you know, having the potential to go out of hand. So all these are concerns and they are going to play out. And I think these things will play out in India also because the valuations are quite rich. And Nifty at 23 times is quite expensive. And also your, uh, you know, the broader market, you know, it's getting increasingly difficult to uh, look at ideas. So given all these, we expect a re reasonable correction to happen in the Indian markets. If it does not happen in uh, price correction, it could play out, uh, you know, it could grind around. So, you know, what we are expecting is that August, September or early part of September is when uh, these things could iron out and the road would be much more clear what is happening on the war front and uh, you know by that time the second quarter results will also be taken into cognizance and from there you know future action can be taken on the markets. All right, Vinay, thanks for that view coming in. Uh, Nagraj, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to shift your focus, take you through the primary market and let's talk a little bit about the IPO frenzy that we've seen, right? Because uh, next week, coming next week, you have two IPOs making their D Street debut and two more opening for subscription and uh, you know first cry and uni commerce are going to be opening you have seagull and ola electric going to be making their debut tell us about this exuberance you're seeing in the primary market any of these ipos standing out to you what's your uh, consensus view on these ipos i normally i don't track ipos but broadly uh, we have seen some good amount of uh, upside momentum ipo post listing and uh, and uh, right now i'm i'm in a, i'm in a thinking that uh, there may be a smaller consolidation initially but uh, the initial public offering you will uh, see some huge uh, uh, upside uh, after the uh, uh, opening okay so uh, nagraj uh, tell us because you know the uh, this week uh, we did saw the monthly weekly expiry also monthly expiry also and the the kind of rollover figures what we saw in July month ending, uh, they were three months lower than uh, they were lower than three months average. Sector rotation is clearly visible. Which are the sectors that are on your radar where one can get benefited? Yeah, currently healthcare, infra, and oil and gas are looking positive. They are uh, uh, placed at the higher levels, though they are placed at the higher levels. Still, there is no indication of any reversal pattern is uh, building at the higher levels. Same as uh, in uh, mid cap and small cap segments. We have seen some one day or two days of decline in mid and small cap segment, and eventually these segments have moved into new all time highs gradually. So, I am not expecting any bigger decline as well in the mid and uh, small cap as well. Next is the banking, and particularly in PSU Bank. PSU Bank has been in a range bond action over the last uh, couple of months, and we have seen most of the PSU banking stocks are uh, moving in a range or uh, placed at the within a high low range. I am expecting this range to break out on the upper side once the uh, the banking uh, stocks, banking sector uh, consolidates and moves up from here onwards. I think PSU banking is the one that would uh, lead the sector uh, over the period of time. And uh, other, you know, other side, uh, you can say that auto, realty, and metals they have started to show some uh, reasonable healthy correction from the higher levels. Some more weakness is likely uh, in the short term, and uh, I'm expecting these sectors could uh, bounce back from the lower levels. 
Positive view coming in on a bunch of sectors, but PSU Banks is what is standing out to Nagraj. Wait, I want to come to you. Let's talk about the big event next week, and that is uh, the MPC policy outcome. Uh, we've seen different, um, you know, stances and different actions being taken globally. You have FOMC, you have Bank of England, Bank of Japan, three very different outcomes coming in. Um, while the street is expecting a hold uh, coming in this time and an unchanged uh, rating coming in, what's your view and what do you think would be the right thing to do uh, when it comes to rate cuts? Do you think um, any more waiting is uh, necessary? Do you think now is a good time. What are you penciling in and what commentary are you expecting to hear from uh, the MPC chair as well? So I'm very clear that we will not get a rate cut from the MPC this time because for them 4% inflation number averaging is very important and you need to get well below that. Stay there for some time before you know you can take a view on how the interest rate cut should uh, be taken up. So I would be looking for commentary to understand how they're seeing the trend play out. That would be very important. And, uh, you know, easing of liquidity are some of the aspects that I would be looking at uh, from the MPC. Right. So MPC, uh, MPC meet also on uh, also in focus for the coming week queues. Uh, uh, moving on, uh, Nagaraj, uh, quickly tell us uh, uh, what are the sectors that are uh, on your radar right now where one can get benefited? Uh, what, what are your stock recommendations for the week? I yeah, have a couple of uh, stock recommendations on the uh, long side. And uh, these two uh, stocks have uh, held up uh, very well during the a very global, very, uh, global and broader market in this uh, week so far. And one is the Bank of India. Bank of India has made an attempt to move up after the range uh, uh, movement action. If you look at the chart patterns of the Bank of India after the moving into a range bound range action over the last couple of weeks, a uh, couple of months, in fact, uh, four or five weeks, it has moved up uh, this week at the support, place at the support. I'm expecting uh, uh, this stock to bounce back, uh, this stock to show some uh, good upside momentum in the near term. Currently, uh, trading around 150, 125.70, 125.65. One may look to buy around this level and target would be around uh, uh, 133. One can place a stop loss at uh, 122. Second one is the Borosil Renewable Energy. This is from a mid-cap counter. And if you look at the chartically, uh, Borosil uh, on the weekly time frame has been in a consolidating uh, accumulation kind of a pattern has been going on uh, over the last uh, few months. Uh, last week's action was a very bullish angle thing. And uh, this week it has validated with the uh, follow-through opmo. Currently placed at the resistance around 555, 560. I'm expecting this resistance is going to be taken out uh, very soon. One can look to buy at this current juncture around, which is currently trading around 553. The initial target would be around 590 and one can place a stop loss at 530. So, Borosil Renewable Bank of India on Nagaraj's uh, buy, side, uh, buy side radar. Thanks so much for taking us through those picks. And on that note, I'll have to let you gentlemen go. Uh, Vineet Nagaraj, thanks so much for joining us. But as we bid you goodbye, let's go across and revisit a conversation we had with Tahir Batra over the course of the week where he spoke about uh, all the sectors that he's liking as of now and the sentiment that he's eyeing in the market. So, let's go across and listen in. But on that note, it's a goodbye from Priyanka and me. Essentially, what will matter is whether we can keep to that 15% kind of expectation. Uh, I mean, just, uh, deliver on that 15% expectation on growth uh, on into which the market is kind of focused on, at least from an aggregate level. Um, and I think after some of these events, that is still kind of in the play. Uh, we have uh, less to worry about at this stage. We, you know, we are keeping some things in mind. For example, commodity prices. Uh, can that be something which can probably you know, affect some of these numbers which are likely to come through. But even there, like we have seen some moderation in oil prices once again. Uh, metal prices, however, have also uh, simultaneously come off after a decent surge uh, in the last one or two uh, quarters, one quarter or so. So I think uh, there is less to worry about and that is probably providing that confidence to the market to move a little more, you know, uh, uh, move further ahead uh, as uh, as we start discounting FY26.